Hi, I'm Jesper Peterson from KDA. If you just joined the series, it might be a good idea to subscribe already now. In this episode, we're going to talk about property bindings. And if you just joined us, there's a pretty good chance that you were Googling property binding and found this place here. Property binding is a vital thing to understand in QML. If you don't understand property bindings, you will be programming QML like if it was an imperative programming language, just like C or C++. And then your code will end up being total spaghetti in no time. So please do stay with me throughout this video. The code that you're looking at now is from our regular training. If you were in one of my trainings, chances are that I would ask you to come up to the front desk or in front of the, the projector and present this to your coworkers. You would likely come up here, you, you have no previous understanding of QML, and it's like, hmm, can I do this? And then you come up and say, okay, let me, let me try and do it. And you say, we import uh, Qt Kick Quick version 2.0. Okay, so far. Uh, the outermost, we have an item. That item has a size of 400 by 200. Yeah. Inside there, we have a rectangle at position 100, uh, comma 50. Um, and, and at this time, you will feel pretty comfortable. You say, hey, I can do this. And then the next part, that's where your evil instructor has set you up for, for disaster. Not for his own pleasure, but for your learning experience. At this point, you'll say, okay, so the width is the height, the twice, the width is twice the height and the height is 100 and the color is light blue. Can I go sit down now again, please? Of course, I wouldn't let you sit down at this stage. I would like the, the, the height, the, the width that is twice the height, which height are we talking about? And you coming from a imperative programming background, you'd say, hmm, that must be, um, well, height isn't defined until after. So here we see height defined. So mm, it must be this height up here. And no, that's not true. This code is exactly the same code as what we saw in the previous video where I already did do like this for you. I just changed the height and the, or the, the position of the height and the width, but it's the, the position here doesn't matter in QML. Now, there's an even more important thing to understand here. The key thing is that the width is twice the height, whatever the height is at any given point in time. I'll say that again. The width is twice the height, whatever the height is at every, any given point in time. So, that means that if you change the height of the element, then the width will also change. And I got another example for you that, that shows, shows that. Let me just get the other example over here. So make this one the uh, current project here. Here is the other example. Let's just read through it real quick. I import Qt Quick 2.0. We understand that by now. I got an item, and the item is just this container that can have two other elements in it. I got a text that says Qt Quick. It has a font and a pixel size and whatnot, and it has position, that's cool. And it has a rectangle. The rectangle, the key thing to understand here is that the width of the rectangle is the text element dot width. And text element, you can see by me just clicking the text element here, it is referring to this element up here. So that's your pointers in QML, the way that you can refer to other elements in QML. Text element dot width, Given that this one has an ID, then with text element dot with down here. Okay, let me run this one here for you. And you can see now that we have text cute quick. It's at a given position and all of that stuff. And we have a green line that sits underneath the, the cute quick text. And the width of that is exactly the same as the width of the text. But wait, there's more. Do I sound like a salesperson here? There really is more. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Let me change text to be text input. Input. And run it again. 
text input is your line edit in QML. It's where you can type in text. And it says Qt Quick here now. But I could change this to Qt Quick 2. <sighs> Did you see that? The green line changed with the size of the text. Why is that? Let me move the window here just a bit. Okay, I was definitely moving it. The width of that rectangle is the width of the text element, whatever value the width of the text element have. So whenever, whenever the text element changes due to these property bindings, the width of the rectangle will change with it. This is not magic. If you come from a cute widget background, let's just do that for just a second. If you come from a cute widget background, you could have done this yourself. You could have created a signal slot connection and the signal would go off whenever the, the text was changing and then it would go into a slot that would change the size of the rectangle. If you come from a motif or an MFC or any other background, you would be able to do something similar to that. It's not magic. The magic part is how it's built into the language. Inside QML, what you will see is that you have these property bindings exactly as we saw here. And it's not just, it's not just one property binding. I can have this width be depended on by another element. And that other element has a property that is depended on by yet another element. And that way, I can have a whole tree of properties that depend on each other. And whenever I'm changing one of them, you're going to have this explosion throughout the whole tree of all the other properties being changed. I'm sure that if you Googled what is QML, you would very fast end up on a page that tells you QML is a declarative programming language. And the de what, 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 what does that mean, declarative? Well, you, you know other declarative programming languages. I'm sure you, you met SQL. In SQL, you say, I want elements from my tables that fulfill this requirement, that I can, I can go to that table and I need to match this one to that. You don't tell it, hey, could you please go to the, to the database and run through the B trees that is sorted and do this whatever. That is, that's the implementation detail behind the scene. Exactly the same way that this property binding, I'll bet you there is a signal slot connection in there somewhere, but that signal slot connection is not something for you to write. You just set up this property binding. You declare, remember declarative programming, you declare what your user interface should look like. I would like my user interface to look in a way where my rectangle has exactly the same width as the text input. That's declarative. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. In the description below the video, you will find links to the examples that you've seen here and other examples in this series. Next time, I will show you an example coded entirely from scratch so you can get an idea of how easy or how difficult it is to develop using QML.